and also i would say it is because of sir that we have this organization today in india along with that sir has been uh, the past executive committee member of assi and also bos sir has also been the fellowship director of aos fine india india and also and the also the editor of indian journal of orthopedics it's an honor sir to have you over here whatever okay. i say is going to be less sir we can go on and on about your achievements sir so thanks a lot we welcome you sir to learn about the basics of the minimally invasive spine surgery uh can you hear me yes sir yeah, yeah. i thank uh, dr jitesh uh, as well as the uh, this concept of conceptual orthopedics for inviting me to give this talk uh it is one way of uh, giving back to my own my alma maters that is uh, km hospital and my medical college in belgaum so i am addressing uh, ms and dnb students uh, that is a privilege so uh, thanks jitesh for this uh, kind introduction so uh, mis surgery is something that uh, uh, is uh, that always fascinated me Uh, so in the last leg of my uh, very long fellowship uh, so i did uh, almost 3 to 4 uh, years of spinal fellowships and it was the last it was in the last leg of my fellowship that i was uh, expect uh, exposed to minimal access spine surgery till then i was a big spec, uh, skeptic so it was only once you know eyes are uh, what you see is believing so so that is what uh, you know uh, made an impact on me and i got attracted towards uh, minimal access uh, surgery so it's close to about uh, 15 years that i've been uh, exercising minimal access surgery so let me start uh, with uh, this particular uh, example so this is an obese lady her uh, uh, you know bmi is about uh, 45 uh, she is a foot soldier she walks barefoot she is a sanyasi she has severe claudication pain and if you see here she has stenosis at three levels l34 l45 l5s1 uh, she has a bag full of comorbidities uh, so she has diabetes uh, on insulin she is hypertensive she is a case of chronic renal failure she is extremely obese and uh, uh, she also has osteoporosis so she is a candidate who can have either a medical complication or a surgical complication uh, if you do a big open surgery because you are exposing her to a significant amount of trauma so what was done in her case to save the day so using just one small you know 2 cm incision we could introduce these tubes at all the levels just angulating them in different directions and decompress all the three levels l34 l45 l5s1 and this is her on the evening of surgery extremely happy and walking so this would have been the size of her incision uh, close to about 10 to 12 cm had it not been uh, the the uh, you know understanding of minimal access surgery so this has been Uh, published by us as well as uh, by various authors this particular technique which is called the over the top technique where the tubular retractor is seated on the lamina and you decompress the ipsilateral uh, side you angulate on the opposite side you decompress the contralateral side by tilting the table tilting the microscope etc so you and by moving the tube in various directions medially laterally superiorly inferiorly within the scope of those that 2 cm incision one can accomplish uh, you know a, a decompression which is which is comparable to an open decompression with less trauma so this concept of doing multi level decompression with a single incision by this tilting the tube in different directions uh, is something which uh, which is uh, one of ju just one aspect of minimal access surgery and this was published uh, recently by us uh, uh, in a journal so compared you know if the, it was an open surgery this probably would have been the size of her incision okay it's not not just the size of the incision it's the size of the same incision lower down on the the fascia and the fat the fatty layer the muscles etc 
and you can imagine in a patient who has so many comorbidities uh, you know the kind of uh, delayed healing that one would expect so that is what happened in this second patient so this patient had undergone a laminectomy using this big long incision she was a, you can imagine you can see how obese she is and the spine is almost about you know 8 to 9 cm deep down so she not only had problems with wound healing so it took about 2 months for her wound to heal that is with secondary intention intention after the intervention of a plastic surgeon so that was one part of the problem second was following the surgery she had a what is called as a destructive laminectomy you can see here so this for those uh, who are fresh to spine this is basically the facet joint so this is this these globules of uh, whiteness that you see here cotton that you see here is basically fluid in the facet joint and this relates to the instability so you can see this patient following a destructive laminectomy destructive laminectomy is wherein you are not bothered about the soft tissues or the bony tissue that are supporting the spine you just uh, you know uh, destroy and uh, uh, excise the lamina not even the decompression is complete here so this patient had undergone open laminectomy which had all sorts of problems she couldn't get get out of her bed because of the pain instability and wound issues and again she had a mountain of comorbidities similar to the previous patient so what is the solution in such a patient 